All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here and kick things off. Let me just make sure I got everything squared away here. Okay. Okay, so again, thank you all for tuning in. Um, this is going to be uh, our first Meet the Synchronians episode. And uh, before we get started, my name is Roel Gonzalez. I'm a product sales engineer for the Virtuosity team. And I'm joined today by Dadia. Okay, I, I had to unmute myself. I think you're uh, unmuted. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so my name is Daria, and I am user success uh, manager at Virtuosity. I work with our sync users since the moment they buy the license. Uh, I provide trainings, mentoring. Uh, I answer technical questions and update you what's happening in Synchro world. My background is architecture and construction. And I've been considering myself a synchronian um, since the very first moment I found out what synchro is and what synchro does. Over to Vlad. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Vladislav Plahotny. I'm a VDC specialist for Camaro Builders. Um, also the synchro user and uh, I guess a synchronian now. Yeah. Awesome. And, and Vladislav, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, the, the idea with these episodes is we want to hear from our customers like you, you know, and just understand how you're using Synchro and, you know, what's successful for you, what are some challenges, and just really get an idea of how, um, how it's incorporated in your day-to-day -day role at Commodore. So, again, we really appreciate you for joining us today and uh, kicking this series off with us. Uh, we were Sorry. introducing Vlad a little bit in um, in the video, the short video I created for um, to promote uh, this meeting. And in this video, uh, I put the, the photo I got from Vladislav when he was in hockey armor. And could you tell us what's the story behind this photo? Well, uh, let me share some screen, screen first. Uh, so. Hockey used to be a really big part of me. Uh, I grew up playing hockey probably since I was 10. Um, I won a couple championships uh, in my 94 born year, um, but I wanted more. So I moved to from Ukraine to US, which is I continued my career in um, Chicago, Illinois. I moved from there to Oregon uh, also. After that, I had a kind of like shifted from the juniors to minors, which has got me to the higher level of uh, hockey, like more like a semi-pro hockey. And after that, I just shifted into just closer to right now to playing for fun. Um, played for the local uh, fire department, which is I also helped them to do some fundraising. Uh, one of them was for Boston wounded veterans also i uh, was able to coach them little goalies and help even my uh, uh wife's uh, roller team <laughs> to get some championships as well that's awesome and what was next yeah. uh, what happened next after you you, you yes like so you're not, okay, so yeah. yeah so while i was kind of doing hockey I uh one of my other like passion and I would say like a hobby was uh graphic design so while I was playing in Moscow uh, I decided to take like a I would say like a part-time job for one of the architectural companies who needed like a graphic support so what happened one of their uh, junior architects uh, he quit and they needed a replacement so somehow um <laughs> I was in a, as a replacement, replacement as a, like a potential. So, and because of my graphic design skills, it helped me kind of dive into like one of my earlier draftings and also shift into the interior and exterior visualization, which is from there, um, because I was progressing fast enough, I was able to go start my architectural classes and. I guess that's where my second career start, started as kind of like an architect and 
also like even though I was in also playing hockey at the same time, it was still kind of on the background, but of course shifted in the foreground as soon as I was done with it. But uh, how did you find out uh, find yourself in in construction industry um, in commodity buildings? So it's um, so one of the things about architecture is obviously it's a design development kind of like from just the sketches to the anal the like a site analysis design analysis and kind of you make those steps. So I started getting curious about how does all those pieces will kind of start coming together at the end and how I'm gonna actually like receive a better product. And also I started like getting uh, a lot of articles of, uh, you need to work in construction to be a better architect. And I guess I just shifted kind of my mindset and take that like path, like literally almost like one day. Yeah, interesting. And um, can you, uh, so I know you kind of mentioned Commodore Builders already, but can you just tell us a little bit more about the organization um, and just sort of some background on that? Yeah, of course. So we're a mid-sized construction company. We founded in 2002. Uh, we're located in our headquarters in Waltham, Massachusetts, but we also have like a smaller office in uh, downtown Boston. We're veteran owned. Uh, we're, I would say, a little under 200 employees. We have our own division of laborers and uh, carpenters. So we're mostly um, concentrating on commercial, uh, corporate interiors, academic and institutional markets, also as like life science and technology, uh, multifamily residential and hospitality. Uh, one of our like big achievements where we, in terms of like first best and unique is, besides like a lead accreditation for some of our projects is delivering the first automated um, vehicle parking in Boston, but also delivering the Boston first uh, CLT building, which is cross laminated timber. Um, awesome. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And and so um, so so you know so take, taking the you know background with Commodore and then your your background with um, with architecture, how did that lead you to decide to start implementing uh, 4D planning? So just kind of going to <laughs> keep going yeah. with the Commodore. So like we have our like six quality qualities of like taking charge, anticipate, like innovate, okay. especially and we always want to elevate the experience for our clients and like one of our like everyday challenges is to be better to be better as a team to be better as for our project delivering that quality project and also to be better for our client and it's kind of like we have like our um the qualities and like three like important claims of those like eliminate those surprises and elevate the experience and delivering that like quality project. So moving to Syncra, so when the COVID hit, uh, obviously everyone had their own downtime and it was on us to decide how we're actually gonna use this time. So we started looking into 4D solutions for our projects as it was kind of on our timeline and I guess that's what the good time to start implementing as we had that extra time and obviously COVID kind of like made everyone to start like kind of that collaboration of like in a problem solve mode so right. we created the 4D task force and we just basically laid out all the options we had in terms of 4D solutions and Synchro was basically the best solution we can find and that's kind of like how our like our first steps was me gotcha gotcha uh, where do you see in your opinion what are the, the best use cases for for 4d how, how do you think what's the best way to apply it uh, and and in your organization so so when we acquired it it was uh we started kind of looking on 
really simple in terms of just uh, as a marketing solution and communicating the bits to the client and making sure they can see kind of like the approach we're taking. But as more we started like dive deep into it, like we found it is really beneficial to use it even for like on actual projects in process as a like a, we can usually review project and which just makes it like communication more clear and quickly between all the uh, stakeholders. And also actually helps us to resolve those conflicts even like before construction. Um, and um, I have some like, I remember the moment when you started working with Synchro because these were our first training sessions. And um, I remember that at the beginning you uh, did not have any experience uh, nor any experience with 4D uh, nor with Synchro. But uh, we have started from simple stuff like interoperability, importing mo models, but with every session we were progressing and uh, I saw your interest in more advanced uh, functionalities and how your understanding of uh, 4D planning was growing up that uh, you saw that behind this model, behind the visualization, there is much more information. And for me, it was like the process of observing how you are becoming the, the synchronium, uh, you know, like just from the user, like software user, then to how you were becoming someone who is enthusiastic about this and has uh, your own ideas uh, about it, how to implement it, how to use it. So what was your perspective of becoming Synchronian? Um, it was scary in the beginning, I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, I was scary. I, and I'm not, no, yeah. I'm not thinking about our sessions. No, no, no. No, I would say scary when we acquired the license. Um, and the only thing, like, I didn't know about virtuosity at all. Like, I knew I got the keys. Okay, good, but I didn't know how to use them. And yeah. the only like instruction I got, I actually like printed out to like, I have this like book, right? And it's like a, you know, 100 pages of PDF trying to like, kind of like instruction to the software, right? And I'm yeah. like a visual person, so I would like maybe like some video explanations maybe. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I'm really glad like a couple of days later, like Daria actually reached out to me and she was shouting me earlier, but I, I was. He was busy. ignoring me. Yeah, I was ignoring. Ignoring, like, ignoring Daria, yeah, no. Trying to sell me something else, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, <laughs> she's uh, actually trying to help me. And obviously, the first session was, I think, complicated in terms of like understanding what is going on because it was a lot of moving pieces and just the simple understanding was a 3D object and what is a resource and how do you filter them and right. how do you categorize them? Plus on top of like you, besides the model, you have a schedule as well. So just understanding that workflow was, I would say a little bit like a, a little difficult and how <laughs> Daria likes to say it's like a, you know, dark magic. But uh, I would say like a, from like a second session, I it started becoming more clear. So I'm glad like Virtuosity does this like one-on-one -on -one training because like, it pushed me like a lot to become kind of like improve my work really quickly. Yeah. And on top of it, she like signed out me for like a Bentley Academy where I was able to get my like a foundation and advanced certificates, which is a lot of those videos were really helpful as well to kind of like, as I say, Synchro has a lot of moving pieces. And it's like, if you start understanding kind of like those patterns, it, it will take you far. <laughs> nice yeah. to hear it. <laughs> and do, do you think um, that your personal life experience and I'm I mean the hockey and that you were moving from one country to another has it made you more open to um, for new things? You know, to take new challenges and uh, don't feel afraid that you might lose, but going and you know being brave in implementing new stuff uh, things in your company and um, yes in your professional life 
Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, like what I used to like, yeah, that's right. Like when I used to play, it was a lot of traveling and obviously like you given the opportunity, you want to use them, you need to use them as well. And I think it's just uh, developing that commitment because like not every day you want to get up, you want to go to the gym, you know, you want to go in the ice and do all of those things. Like some days just you're not going to feel the same. So I think yeah. just like being committed, that's definitely a great like life lesson what I got. And also like sometimes some days not going to be great and you're going to fall and, you know, you have to just start over. And like even with Synchro, like, yeah, I had some moments in the beginning, but you know, just being committed to it and try to kind of like, <laughs> yeah, and try to overcome. Like that's, I think that what kind of makes me like, gives me like those qualities from like playing sports. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. I can see how, how you developing that early on could just carry over to, uh, to your role now at Commodore. That's awesome. Um, and so, by the way, I see we ahead, have questions coming. Sorry, just I will say something to our audience. I see there are questions coming and we will come to them, um, okay, uh, at the end and we will come to your questions. So anything you have, just uh, uh, send the questions and we will, I will read them for Vladislav and we will answer them. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks for bringing that up, that point up. Okay, so, uh, over to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, so so Vladislav, uh, maybe now let's transition more into uh, just some specific projects that you're working on where you implement Synchro. Do you uh, do you have anything that you could share with us um, to kind of yeah. show us a little bit? Yeah, I can briefly talk about one of them. So um, that's one of our uh, kind of recent uh, institutional public projects where we are uh, demoing the city hall and we're putting a, a new fire and police department and what synchro so far is helping us to actually sequence that job especially us doing the soil nailing um uh, building kind of the underground garage um and working on um i would say fairly tight site in a pretty like public neighborhood and one of the i think uh biggest um i would say pluses where we kind of like discovered this was like developing the steel sequence and visualizing the, like uh for the team and also mm -hmm. the um exterior development that was something like big for us in this project and actually like as we go we kind of like uh, getting more value out of it yeah oh. That's awesome. And and these these are all renderings from Synchro. Or th is this using the iRay plugin too? To yes. Show? Yeah, that's correct. Um, that's awesome. Definitely, it helps too because uh, sometimes like we present to the client, so we want to have a kind of <laughs> like our marketing department likes to have a pretty picture. So that's kind of uh, mm -hmm. helps to show not only the technical side, but like at least uh, the, for the visualization. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's nice because that iWord plugin is like built right in, right? So you just render it out and, and you're able showing to show it. to architects. So this is how your building is. <laughs> we look under construction. Yep, and uh, that's why I like too. It's like you kind of see like this project like come to life from like you know just literally from the start. And I guess like that's where like kind of my passion is coming from. As is like an architecture, it's like you see that like a design progression right right yeah that makes sense um so were there any specific challenges that you faced while going through this project anything that kind of got in the way some hiccups that maybe you had some solutions to along the way that synchro sort of helped with there yeah i mean just talking just in the general like construction industry sometimes can be stuck a little bit in the old ways and even right bring the image to life instead of just like a plain drawings with the schedule helps that visualization. And we had a, a couple like, I would say minor conflicts, which is we, you know, resolved before actually the construction started. And it helped us in a, maybe not in a terms of like 
construction, but even the simple logistics in the beginning. Yeah. And yeah, that was big. Yeah. So, and you're an architect from your background, and uh, how does 4D resonate uh, with with this background? You, you mentioned this, that you know this, this this process from the beginning to the end. But uh, yeah, like what? Uh, um, yeah. So how do you find yourself? You know, like being now on on the other side. Uh, like before, you were the one who is designing, and now you're the one who is executing. So, I think it's uh, it's like one of my I guess samples I had earlier in my career. So um, I think it's interesting to kind of see it like from the paper, right? And like almost seeing that like uh, a full like timeline like uh, of the whole project, you know, like because. With the architecture is like when you develop design from just the regular sketches and into the drafting and into the interior and exterior renderings and all the case study you're doing. So I think it's great for me to kind of like make a next step and figure out like how this building or like specific a specific project will fully come to life and what does what those components going to be and how many obviously challenges what are the challenges going to be to kind of like get that experience and um carry over for the future yeah cool. and do you have any uh, trick uh, any tip and trick to to share with uh, our audience um yeah so the previous project, like the one of the recent projects I showed, like oh, one of the things I was talking to you was about how do we show like the envelope, the sequencing from all the layers we have in the wall. So uh, we were kind of talking about like okay, we can make uh, you know multiple appearance profiles and just assign like the same you know the same wall to like just the different like profiles and just basically use like a color coding. So what I discovered, like if you go and grab it and you click like uh, explode those like layers, what I really like about Syncra, it actually understands um, those layers and you can just filter them out by, you know, by materials. So later, like I just created like a bunch of 3D filters, which is, um, basically separates all those layers and I can just easily like assign them to the schedule, which just helps this kind of like optimize the sequence. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's very useful, especially yeah, if uh, in the typical, in the buildings with multi layers was so super cool. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think now Roel, Ro <laughs> Your... Yeah, yeah. So um, more to the end. Uh, Vlasa, just you know, uh, we got to ask you know what are you know what are your future plans with Synchro and in general? What do you what do you have in the lineup coming up in the next maybe few months or the next year? What, what what's that what's that looking like? I mean, in general, I just you know want to retire early as a millionaire. But that's, you know, I think <laughs> yeah. everyone wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, but seriously, uh, yeah. going back to Syncra, like, uh, so our licenses will be kind of like renewed in July and we'll be making transition from uh, Syncra Pro to Syncra 4D. So that's going to be, I guess, the next challenge we're going to take in terms of um, improving the process on the actual projects. And um, that's kind of the plan. <laughs> and okay. we, yeah. obviously we want to stay on it. I know it's going to be a lot of moving pieces there. And especially like, I know the synchro cost is supposed to come out, I think by the end of the year, if I'm correct, uh, L will be adding the synchro control, a synchro field. And I think also like, 4D is not just a one-man job. It's you have to keep aligned your whole team. So obviously it's gonna be the period where we have to educate all their team members as well of like right. what is going on and 
how we're going to use it and where we're going to use it. And so like just the training, the case study, like will take time, but it's definitely on kind of like our future goals right now. So it's a big plan. So we will be checking on you. <laughs> if you speak to it. Yeah. <laughs> we have yeah, to and I, and... points. <laughs> and uh, we have a, I am, um, we have some uh, questions coming. So Raul, would you like to say now about the next meetings or uh, do you think we, we go through the questions now and then we will... Uh, we, uh, why don't we go through some of the questions? And then all okay, so we can yes, talk about. Uh, um, one of them is what are your uh, that would be uh, left to you. What are your top three favorite functions in Synchro? Uh, just headlines. You don't need to elaborate. So top oh. three. <laughs> top three. Uh, 3D filtering. Um, okay, that's one. Yeah. Um, that's one. Appearance profiles and animation. Okay. So you get three yeah. of them. Three okay. Solid. And uh, another one is similar. Which feature capability of Synchro yeah, you have used the most? So uh, yeah, like so it's a little bit similar. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think uh, as like you start preparing your model, it's the three D filtering. I I think that's literally what I've been using, and also I, it's hard because like. Yes, it is 3D filtering, but it's also like uh, I sign in into the schedule, which is like you have the appearance profiles comes in. And I know we kind of elaborate on that a little bit. I know we've talked like Synchro has more uh, like capabilities than that in terms of like um, I can create and rabbit those user fields, right? And I can assign and Synchro will understand them, so that's my sorting and filtering will be actually even faster. So I think it's um, kind of like I'm, I guess I'm still using this like, you know, kind of foundation like level of like filtering and sorting, but like that's, I would say like next step, like that's what I'd be mostly like commonly used in especially the activity codes, which is like the schedule is going to come in. So yeah. Okay, and <laughs> a lot of questions about the functions. Uh, uh, Vlad, what's your favorite thing to model in Synchro? Um, I, I would say uh, the ground up projects I'll be my favorite because I'm not a huge fan of uh, renovations because it's a lot of pieces where you, um, I mean, it's just a lot of moving pieces in the interior right. and sometimes it will be especially like as i'm still new to it it can be a little bit challenging doesn't mean it's not possible and i saw a great examples of other um, synchro users who've done an excellent job so i guess that's kind of like my uh <laughs> new kind of like a level of development okay like we've done the ground ground up project like but what about like it and we didn't apply it on like a renovation like level so that's going to be my is next and should become my favorite just in case <laughs> <laughs> okay so next question um so great discussion thanks do you always get the fully developed schedule or you need to develop your own one in this uh, in the software so i, I suppose uh, in synchro so it depends like sometimes like even with uh on the recent project with the steel like i just got basically a full duration of steel but i also got the information of like how like our sub's going to sequence it so my job was basically try to break it up those you know that duration was the kind of full lot of steel by like those sequences so i started making those changes to the schedule so mm -hmm. it it depends on like where you're trying to connect and when you're trying to assign. So I would say it's case by case. Like that's kind of I would say like one of the things I'm we definitely want to look into as like working as a team as understanding how can I bring the scheduler and like a 4D planner on the same page in terms of like how to optimize that workflow because as, as Synchro has like so many ways of doing that. 
Uh, okay, next one. Um, this uh, in a sync graph, the resource utilization graphs used with simulation are only used for the uh, visualization. So, uh, Vlad, do you use this uh, this functionality uh, to produce resource utilization graph? Um, yes, sometimes as a like a quick, uh, I would say more like. A quick screenshot of like even how I show today in the presentation. Um, sometimes, uh, as like as I said in the beginning, it was more like a marketing tool, so it mm -hmm. would be used as a visualization. And as Royal mentioned, like IRA is a great tool um, to kind of like a great addition in order to do it. Okay, and there's the question about ice hockey, <laughs> one of the most skillful, dynamic, challenging, and satisfying team game. How does uh, how does the team play realized in ice hockey translate to team play in the construction management? Is there any correlation? Personally, I see dynamically changing situation, complexity, and difficulty, like in ice hockey can all be managed via 4D principles, methods? <laughs> Complex question, but <laughs> hockey related. No. Yeah, but I like it. Uh, I think playing on a team, like sometimes, you, yes, you have to be a team member and you have a leader and you know you have to follow it, but sometimes you, you have to become a leader too. So it's like ability to switch roles, I think is really playing kind of like important part in, in construction because Sometimes it's to make like a team decision. Sometimes it's all up to you, and you have to bring everyone else like on board. And I think hockey uh, really helped me in order to do that because like there are some of the sports where it's really individual. And after you know after your career, and I know like talking to some of the athletes, they struggle to work in the team because they know it's like, it was all up to them. They were relying on themselves. So it's like, those like all well, trust issues. Um, but as because of the hockey as a team sport, it, yeah, it definitely helped me a lot. And working as a, you know, even like with architecture, like you have a team of designers. So, and you always, you know, either bounce ideas out of each other or, you're trying to help out each other but also like you're working on a project with so many pieces and you have to be able to communicate that with them as well <laughs> okay next question uh yeah, we're throwing a lot of bloody slavy <laughs> a lot of questions there. it's great i'm ready <laughs> so, well, thank you for your insights uh legend i'm going to retire with you <laughs> sitting on those millions <laughs> <laughs> there is another uh, yes. There is another question uh, about how accurate uh, is your three D subdivision uh, data? Oh, so, the three D subdivision tool uh, in your uh, modeling. Yeah, so I'm trying to do. I usually use the subdivision previously in Revit, and I just imported. I don't you usually do it in synchro because i like one of the first steps you know before before like i would say like of the workflow is you know prepare the model and prepare the schedule so and as we get the model from the architect it just or like engineer uh we're i'm trying to kind of prepare it in the revit first and from there because it's all the levels are assigned so it's easier to just split it and just go for it yeah that's that's generally the workflow that most people do yeah they'll split it up in revit and then push it over so that makes sense um i think we went to uh end of those uh on the list of the questions so i don't see any more uh yeah so Raul, up to you all right good deal well uh Vladislav, again, I want to thank you for joining us on this first episode. You know, we're we're kicking things off, and you know, we're all kind of, you know, getting this going. And and I appreciate you for you know um, just just coming on and being our first guest and just being a part of this community that we're trying to build. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll be keeping in touch about Synchro 4D and 
you know, making sure that you get all of the other tools implemented to complement Synchro 40 Pro, um, so you get that full workflow. Uh, but to everybody in the audience, uh, the idea with these with this webinar series is we'll be doing this um, uh, usually on a biweekly or monthly basis. And so, you know, be tuning in for other episodes that we'll be promoting on LinkedIn. Um, and we just, you know, hope to, again, just get, just kind of get people talking more about Synchro and really just build a community around, um, around this platform. So um, if you don't have anything else, guys, I think we can cut it there. Yeah, yep. So greetings to right. all Synchronians who are with us. So thank you very yeah. much. For joining us today and Vlad, thank you very much. And yeah, we will see in in the training session. So Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you everyone. Yeah, yeah thanks guys. Okay.